Hey everyone, we're back at it, talking about Whole Home Audio, so let's get started. This video is going to go into more detail on how to wirelessly control the mono price, six zone, six source, whole home audio amplifier, and also the Dayton Audio DAX66 amplifier, which is basically the same thing as the mono price one. I did a video discussing the differences between these two amps, so if you haven't seen it, please check that out on my channel. But anyway, in that video detailing the differences, I did mention how you can wirelessly control these units without needing to physically touch any of the keypads. And in order to do that, you need to purchase the iPad app for $4.99 and the iTac Flex IP by Global Cash. And the links for those are in the description. So here I am in the network room. This particular install is the Dayton Audio DAX 66 amplifiers. The top amp is the master and the bottom is the slave. So this system is actually a 12 zone, six source system. Over here is where I have the 12 keypads terminate. I've got six on the top and then one cable that goes to the top amp and six on the bottom um, with one cable going to the bottom amp. This white bundle over here is all of the speaker room cable. Um, so all the rooms terminate here and you can see on the top I've got my RCA sources plugged in and I've also got one Chromecast audio plugged in. Something I don't think I've mentioned yet in either of my whole home audio videos is that these amps are fanless so they don't generate any noise and it makes them not get too dusty either. I wanted to point out how these amplifiers are set up to be in a 12 by 6 system which is actually controlled by this ribbon cable right here that connects the two amplifiers physically together and then there's a switch on the back that you flip says master, slave 1, and slave 2, and you set those switches accordingly. Now that I've shown a little bit about what some of these cables are, let's go ahead and start talking about what this video is really about. On the top of this amplifier, you can see that there's a cable plugged in to the RS-232 port. Um, for those of you that don't know what that is, RS-232 is a very old communication standard that can send serial data, serial meaning one bit at a time. Now the problem with RS-232 is that um, it's not related at all to how Ethernet works, so you can't directly plug this amplifier into your home network and control it. But that's what we're talking about here in this video, is that the Global Cache company, their device, that's how they come into play. It converts the IP serial commands, um, IP commands into the serial commands in order to control this amplifier anywhere on your network. So to set all this up, all you have to do is plug in the power adapter, plug in the Ethernet cable um, to your network, and then plug in the RS-232 cable into your amplifier. And then once you have all this plugged into your network, all you need to do um, is go to the IP address um, in the browser and make it a static IP address. That way it doesn't change on you and cause problems down the road. And so I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, so I've gone to the local IP address in my browser, and that prevents us with a very simple interface to make changes. You have the network settings, and then you've got the flex link cable settings. So let's first go into the network settings and take a look. Here, all we have to do is set the IP address, the subnet mask, the gateway, and the DNS information. This information is all standard, and so just like you would set this up for a computer, you're just going to set this up for this little device. The name field is how it will show up on your network, so if you want to, you can change that. Let's go back to the main menu and take a look at the flex link cable settings. Here, you will tell it that you're using the RS-232 cable and you'll have to set the baud rate to 9600, flow control to none, half duplex, parity none, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and that the gender changer is set to false. Save this configuration and that's it. That's really all you have to do. Um, next what we have to do is we need to go to the iPad app and set that up really quick so that way that app knows where to send the um, commands to. So let's go do that. First, you need to make sure that you've purchased the Monoprice Audio Amp from uh, Monoprice Audio App from the App Store. It's only four dollars and ninety-nine cents, and it will work for both the Monoprice Amp and the Dayton Audio Amps, which is what I'm using uh, right now in this video. So let's open the app up, and first, you won't see any of this because you know you wouldn't have it configured yet. But let's go into the settings. At the bottom, you have settings for the server, zones, and sources. On the server, you simply put the IP address of that iTAC device that we just configured in our browser, and that's all you have to put is just the IP address. Now let's go to the Zones tab, 
Here you just enter the name of the zones. That's all you have to do is just enter the text. Starting with zone 1 at the top and work your way through all the zones. That's all you have to do for that. So lastly, let's go to sources and it works just the same way. You just enter the name of the source with source 1 at the top, working your way through the rest. After this info is entered in the settings, you would go back and you have this nice grid displaying the zones and you can easily toggle them on and off and adjust the volume by dragging it. You can click on the source icon on the side and change the source for that zone, including the bass and treble. So that pretty much does it for this video. I hope it was helpful and demonstrates the versatility that you can achieve with these amps. If you found it useful, give me a thumbs up, and if you like any of my videos, give me a subscribe so that way I can continue to make these videos and I get ideas from you guys for videos to make in the future. So until next time, take it easy. Thanks.